just tie up a, a really quick uh, pattern that's, uh, a, we'll call it the pyramid beetle. I think that's what they call it. It's a, just a, a terrestrial um, beetle uh, that's used on Pyramid Lake. I'm going to use some white thread. I've got a size 12 hook in the vise. I'm going to leave a little bit of space behind the eye. Uh, this is really a, a quick and a fairly straightforward, easy pattern to tie. I'm just going to lay down a thread um, foundation a little bit here. I'm not worried about build up on this one at all. And you'll see why here in a moment. But I'll take my thread back up to, you know, near the point of the hook, maybe a little bit closer towards the bend. I'm going to take myself a piece of white foam here that I've got cut to about the width of the gap of the hook here, or the gape. I'm going to just sit that right on top. You can see that I've trimmed that down a little bit. Um, that just helps me ensure that I have a little bit less material at least um, as I initially tie this in so that we don't have as much underbody going on here. So we'll just go ahead and take a few wraps here I'm going to bring that back down to where we're going to want the beetle's case to kind of bend over the top of our hook here and back to about there that's about where I'm going to want to start I'm using a GSP uh, thread here in white um, the reason is, is I want to pull on this pretty hard uh, be able to pull it tight without breaking because I really just want to compress this foam down around the hook as much as I possibly can. Um, when we get up to the top and we fold this um, shell over, we do not want to be pulling too tight. It will actually cut right through this foam. This GSP will cut right through the middle of it. So really, um, I'm using the GSP for this portion of the fly most specifically. Um, so I can compress that foam down. Then I'm just going to let my thread travel back again. We're going to pick up our next material and it's going to be this, uh, it's going to be a, a chenille that is a cactus that's green with some, some flash in it. So I'm just going to take my fingernail and strip some of the material off and you'll see that we end up with a little bit of the string showing. And that just, you know, keeps us from tying in the bulk of uh, some of that chenille material that we really don't need. So we can start this chenille braid right at the very um, back where this, the abdomen of this uh, beetle is going to be. And I'm going to take my thread back here. A um, couple of those little pieces of thread are sticking up. I'll just sneak in here with my scissors really quick and say hasta la vista um, to those guys. And Thank you for sticking with me for a minute. I'm just going to take my thread back up to the front of the hook. So we're just going to take this chanel that we just tied in. And I'm going to try to uh, put this on a, about as thickly packed as I possibly can. So one wrap right in front of the other one. And what I'll do is I'll try to um, stroke some of those uh, little fibers um, backwards as I move my way up. And that's going to give us a more dense... Um, chenille body and that's what we're looking for here so every turn I'm pulling some of those backwards and it's hardly even visible when you're tying but you'll notice that when you're when you're done that you've actually built a, a much more compressed and dense chenille body by doing this so again just one wrap in front of the other constantly kind of stroking those fibers backwards as we move our way up. Probably final wrap right about there. So from there I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and Take a couple wraps over the top of our piece of chenille here. I'll take a couple wraps um, on the other side behind the eye of the hook. We'll go 
go ahead and turn our vise a little bit sideways so I can get at the string on the chenille so I can get it cut off nice and tight and close. And hopefully you can see the nice um, compact body that we've built of that chenille. So once we've got that cleaned up a little bit, I'll just take a few um, turns of this thread here. We're gonna just take our foam body here. We're gonna pull it over the top. I'm gonna just take a couple of um, really kind of loose wraps here. Not, not really sinking it up, cinching it up at all. It's like that. I'm going to kind of pull down on it and I, again I don't want to pull down too hard because I will end up um, cutting right through the material and that's really not what I want to do so got that pretty good and secured down I've got a beetle with a really long nose so we'll need to come in here with our scissors and we're going to cut off that excess I'm going to cut it off right about right about there from here we're just going to finish this guy off with a, a good whip finish um, and on this pattern when I whip finish I'm actually going to go ahead and glue uh, put some of our, our varnish on our thread before we whip finish so I'm just going to take it on my sewing pin here and I'm just going to let that get onto my thread uh, just just like that don't want to take it too far down because I don't want it to get into my whip finisher but this is going to allow us as we whip finish to actually um, seal it down pretty good with the glue um, so we don't have to follow it up with it afterwards or the varnish so I've got my whip finisher now again I don't want to pull it too tight um, but I do want those wraps that have the glue in it um, to come down we'll go ahead Lock that down, turn our vise a little bit, get rid of the thread with the other end of our whip finisher. And there we go. Um, the Pyramid Lake Beetle, um, give it a shot. Um, especially if you're going on Pyramid, I've heard it's, it works elsewhere. I'm gonna have to try it in some of the, the lakes and snow waters that I fish.